The updated UNICEF framework for nutrition security published by The Lancet in 2013 shows that not one intervention in the areas of household food security, care, health and sanitation is sufficient in itself to achieve nutrition security and that nutrition by definition is a multiple sectoral area. Interventions in all three, three areas are needed to achieve a well-nourished population. On the left side of the Lancet framework there is a box with interventions which are called nutrition specific. These interventions have direct impact on the nutritional status of an individual, such as adequate food and nutrition intake, feeding, caregiving and parenting practice, and low burden of infectious diseases. On the right side there is a box called nutrition sensitive, which are the interventions that had not a direct impact, but work through the immediate environment influencing nutritional status, such as food security, adequate caregiving resources at maternal, household and community level, and access to health services and a safe and hygienic environment. Both areas of interventions address the three pillars of nutrition security, household food security, care, health and sanitation. Taking a closer look, we can see a long list of nutrition specific interventions. Let me give some uncommon examples. Adolescent health, preconception nutrition, micronutrient supplementation and fortification, dietary diversification and feeding behaviors and stimulation. Some specific programs are the first thousand day program, the time between a woman's pregnancy and a, second, a child's second birthday, which is a thousand days, offers a win unique window of opportunity to shape healthier individuals. This program is addressing several of the nutrition specific interventions, micronutrient supplementation of mother and child, maternal dietary uh, supplementation, breastfeeding and complementary feeding, the most common of them all, dietary supplementation for children and treatment of secure and acute malnutrition. Another example that we can show is child health days or weeks. This intervention delivers cost-effective health care. As one stop shop, children could receive, depending on the country, the following services. The vitamin A supplementation to boost immunity and prevent blindness. The deworming tablets to treat par parasitic infections and the iron deficiency anemia they can cause. Routine immunization monitoring for nutritional status, insecticide-treated mosquito nets to prevent malaria, but also other interventions may be added. Often that's measles defection, sometimes hepatitis B, and often women of childbearing age receive tetanus vaccinations during those days. The nutrition-sensitive program and approaches are much broader defined than the nutrition-specific interventions. The focus areas of these interventions are, among, are, amongst others, agriculture and food security, social safety networks, early child development, women's empowerment and child protection. An example in the area of agriculture and food security. There are already many initiatives and approaches and courses developed to link agriculture and nutrition. However, the evidence of impact of nutrition sensitive agriculture programs on maternal and child nutrition are limited, except for vitamin A. The production and consumption of orange sweet potato shows the feasibility and effectiveness of biofortified vitamin A rich orange sweet potato for increasing maternal and child vitamin A intake and status. For example, in Harvest Plus, where in um, program in Mozambique where consumption of 200 grams of orange, uh, orange sweet potato only three times a week was sufficient to correct the vitamin A deficiency in children under five. Evidences, uh, evidence of the effectiveness of biofortification continues to grow for other micronutrient and crop combinations. For example, vitamin A rich yellow cassava in Nigeria is a good contribution to uh, the vitamin A status of children and the iron-rich beans in Rwanda. 
Another area is women's empowerment. Here, intervention different from literacy training to nutrition education to entrepreneurship. Women need to be able to make informed decisions about family diet. And when they have the capacity, they actually make these decisions, benefiting their families and their children. Research show that mothers who, who have finished their primary school have children that are less affected by chronic undernutrition. In addition to literacy and, sco and schooling, women need to access income to enable to grow and or buy nutritious foods to provide a diversified diet for their children and families. When they have access to knowledge, farming inputs, extension service and markets, they will improve the diet of their children and families. But when women are mainly occupied with generating income and contributing to family farming of especially cash crops, this has a potential da danger of higher levels of chronic undernutrition because women cannot reserve enough time for the caring of their children and the family. In Ethiopia, one of the highest stunting rates can be found in the breadbasket province of the country. Similar trends have been observed in cacao growing areas of Indonesia. Now, nutrition specific and sensitive interventions are not sufficient in itself to achieve nutrition security. Implemented jointly and or complementary, the impact will be significant. Nutrition sensitive programs can serve as delivery platforms for nutrition specific interventions, potentially increasing their skill, coverage and effectiveness. But this requires a strong multiple sectoral collaboration. In more and more countries, the scaling up nutrition movement will be a key facilitator of, of such collaborations between the relevant sectors. Another Area of attention can be the joint planning and implementation of sectoral interventions, which should be done to ensure that all complementary services, specific and sensitive, are being delivered to communities and households for the highest impact. For example, hygiene and sanitation education done by the health sector will, will have more impact if the water sector, at the same time, build water wells in those communities. Another example is to add on a nutrition sensitive agriculture component to an existing community nutrition education program to ensure that the nutrition foods are grown and available for household consumption. Such a program is being developed for Ethiopia. To achieve a well nourished population, nutrition sensitive and nutrition specific interventions should complement each other to ensure that the three pillars of food and nutrition security are addressed.